for the quarterfinals. Take it away, you two. Thank you, Maria. Welcome to the booth here at Pro Tour for Exia. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chion, and we've got a great quarterfinal to kick off our day here in the top eight, Paul. In the feature, we've got Nathan Stoyer versus Reed Duke. Now, if you've been watching our broadcast, you know, for the past few years, you may be used to our double elimination top eight uh, format. That is not what we have here today. They are going to be playing best three out of five games rather than the best uh, two out of three. So it's going to take a little bit more to pick up a match win, but a loss will very much send one of these players home. As you see Reed Duke approaching the battlefield here, there's Nathan Stoyer, our reigning world champion as well. And as I mentioned, we, we have an elimination already here, right? One of these two players is going to be going home after this match. So big pressure on these guys. And uh, they got to try to get off to a good start here in game number one. Now, Paul, the format here also, since we're being, playing best three out of five, is that there's two game ones, if you will, meaning pre-sideboarded games. And then any games played after that will have sideboards. Yeah, we are returning to kind of the format that we had back when we had tabletop pro tours. Right. And th this is kind of both players getting to play the game one. And I know we talked about how Reed Duke in this matchup has some ways to interact with those light counters in Make Disappear and cards like Spell Pierce. But keep in mind, I mean, you look at Lotus Field combo and you're thinking, wow, this deck is just very linear, linear has nothing to do. It does have a couple of really important cards, game one, that it can play to interact with what Reed's doing. Namely, the most important card is Odawara Soaring City. If, if Nathan does not feel like he can combo off, he can simply keep up four mana and keep up Odawara and that will break up the combo. You can just bounce the World Spine Worm. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, that buys you the time so you don't just die right away. In the meantime, all red mana here for Reed Duke, but he does cap it off with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the ideal turn three play for him. On the other side though, it's been a good start for Nathan Stoyer as well. He went land, land, and then Sylvan Scrying for a Lotus Field. Sure. So both players kind of doing the setup that they hope to do in the, in the early to mid stages of the game. The issue here, um, you know, if you look at Reed, is that he, he does not have access to blue mana currently. Now, that isn't going to stop him from, from playing his spells here, but, you know, he's got a couple of impulses in his hand that at least currently he can't cast. Yeah, Nathan wants to preserve that Despian stage if possible. He did go and search out the Lotus Field, but of course you need both Despian stage and Lotus Field in play to effectively combo off. If you take a look at his hand, he does have an extra Thespian stage in hand, along with an Arboreal Grazer. So this turn, he could potentially run that out and play two lands this turn, if he wants. When asked, what was the best card in Pioneer, Nathan? A lot of players will respond with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Thoughtseize, right? Extremely powerful cards, multi-format all-stars. Nathan responded with Arboreal Grazer. Yeah, and we've got some trivia for chat, too. <laughs> what Power 9 card did he compare Arboreal Grazer to? Ooh, good one. Yeah. What is it? There you go, another Thespian stage. We'll tell you in just a minute. And there it is. The Arboreal Grazer is going to allow him to maintain a copy of Thespian Stage on the battlefield as he had just played a second one, and then also play the Lotus Field. So he is very well on his way. People are saying Mox Emerald, Time Walk, Black Lotus. <laughs> Black Lotus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ancestral Recall. Now they're just sort of listing Power 9 cards, I guess. Yeah. I think the, the two guesses are Time Walk and Mox Emerald. Those are those are reasonable, as long as nobody says Time Twister. Yeah, right? nobody said Twister just yet. The answer is Time Walk. Time Walk on turn one or two. It is a fantastic, fantastic card in this deck. Yeah, in this deck, with yeah. its goals being around land drops primarily, it, it actually does emulate a Time Walk pretty yeah. well. The way that this deck works, oftentimes you can combo people off on turn four, right? You, you get the lands, but with the Grazer, that, that kind of accelerates those things and allows you to potentially maybe even go off on turn three sometimes. We see Fire Prophecy and Impulse hit the yard after chapter two from Fable of the Mirror Breaker here for Duke. Can he do anything explosive this turn, Paul? Because I, if I'm Reed, I'm looking over at the other side and the table set for a tasty dinner here for Nathan Stoyer next turn. So Reed is one mana short and a permanent short from casting the creativity in hand, right? Ouch. If he had five mana, you could creativity for two with two things in play to, to kill Nathan. But he doesn't have that any... 
He only has mountains up, but of course we know that the treasure can be used to tap for blue. Now, currently, Reed doesn't have a counter, right? Doesn't have any counter magic up. However, he does have a big score. He can cast big score and hope to find a make disappear or a spell pierce if Nathan tries to go off this turn. Because if you're Nathan and you don't have an Odawara here, you have to think that it's really likely that Reed's, Reed's going to go for the combo next turn. That's right. So now the question is, does Nathan feel that he needs to go for it his turn? And that's what you're getting at here, right, Paul? Is that if he feels pressured that Reed could go for it, he may feel the need to go for it himself. And interestingly, I think Reed would feel a lot better if Nathan said, you know, I'll just take my time, pass it back to you. know, And then Reed can breathe a sigh of relief. But if Nathan does go for it, we're going to see a bit of a desperation big score. And one other note here by the way, is if Reed Duke goes for a creativity for two, Nathan could break apart that combo with that Boseju in his hand, right? With oh. Boseju, you can target the treasure and destroy that treasure. So then Reed would only get one creature in play. So Reed, knowing that Boseju could be a thing, knowing that you can't really play around Odawara, it might be correct to just go for a creativity for so, three. As an update here, Nathan did not go for it. He passed the turn back to Reed, who resolves big score on his end step. Now he's got three treasures, four lands, and another treasure coming off of the goblin. He can also just target the two creatures that he has in play, right? Mm -hmm. Because Boseju does not interact with that. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, reflection is, is an enchantment. So you could break that up too, right? Enchantment creature, enchantment yeah. Creature. So, does Reed have the mana to go for in a creativity for three? three? He has a land drop to give here. Land drop to give. Yeah, so you can sack a treasure and target three things. Now, of course, Odawara still breaks it up, but that allows you to get, even if, even if Nathan, Nathan has Bostagia, you can still get two things here. And it looks like Reed's going to go for it. Here it is, Indomitable Creativity two for two. All right, so he is opening the door here for Biseju to break up the combo. First is going to be Nathan Stoyer cycling Vizier of Tumbling Sands. So there's Biseju targeting the reflection of Kiki Jiki. Hmm, he went for two. So then Reed will only get one creature here as the Bostejo will target the Fable. Now, Reed will get a land here. Will he have the mana to go for another creativity, potentially? Just double-checking what he can get. He also has an impulse in his hand and two extra treasures. Right. But does he have enough mana to go for the creativity again? The answer is yeah, right? Well, so he, what was the other target with the creativity? Was it a, it was treasure? a treasure token? So if that resolves, he's only going to have access to three mana, right? You're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right, Paul. And he needs to have that go away. And to he, the I believe he could have gone for a creativity for three. Yeah. Now we're going to start revealing cards. Boy, if he lets Nathan Stoyer just have another turn here, he could be maximally punished. I mean, Nathan has a pour over the pages and an impulse, so really likely to be able to find what he needs. He still has two mana floating, can use Despian Stage on the Lotus Field. Okay, there's World Spine Worm. Still not a bad deal for five mana. But that is not going to kill Nathan this turn as it sits. Now, what does Reed have left? He can still attack with the Goblin, get a token, and would still have access to Impulse into a potential Make Disappear yeah. to try to break apart if something yeah. if Nathan tries to go for it next turn. So not out of it yet, right? Still gets to get in, make a treasure, will have access to four mana, then you'll have access to Impulse into Disruption. Also have one spell pierce in the main. And we saw, by the way, that Nathan used that extra mana that he had accrued 
off of the Vizier to copy Lotus Field, something that he needed to get out of the way here as well. He gets to untap, though, with two Lotus Fields. All right, this is the turn here for Nathan. 15-15 Trample Worm, maybe not enough for Reed Duke in game number one. Let's see if Nathan can go off. Yeah, if I mean... Reed can stop a pour over the pages, you know, he could potentially get another turn. Yeah, Nathan has access to a ton of mana here. Remember, he's so he's got a hidden strings in hand as well, and that oh. nets you four mana whenever you cast it with double Lotus Field. Okay, well, then he's just going to have enough to pay for any type of interaction that Reed can come up with. Exactly, so it's now just a question of whether or not he can find what he needs with that pour over the pages in his hand. He doesn't have an ultimatum in his hand just yet. Have you ever played against his deck, Paul? I've played with it and against it. So um, you have experienced never finding what you need and them always having what they need? You usually find what you need. Oh boy, yeah, that's real I bad. usually find some other way to lose when I play this Lotus Field combo <laughs> deck, to be honest. <laughs> Not enough black mana or <laughs> yeah. whatever. All right, here's pour over the pages now for Nathan Stoyer as he begins to go off. All Reed can do is look on. Okay, that's just, just has an impulse here. Now, of course, he does have a Balagid recovery. With all the mana that he has, he can use the recovery to get back pour over the pages and cast it again. Still the land drop, I believe. Yeah, I do. You do. Okay. And because pour over the pages untaps two lands, that would only really cost you two mana. So it's effectively two mana, draw three, discard one. Untapped breeding pool. So pour the pages yeah. back into hand. And Reed just says, yep, you got it. Now I got a World Spine Worm. What do you got? Uh, turn this in my hand. I'm going to float up to uh, 3, 6, 8 blue. Cast this down to 3 blue. I have 3 blue floating. All the blue. This is really good communication, by the way, by Nathan. This is definitely how you're supposed to do it. All right, 10 mana. And somehow now, if you fizzle, found an Odawara. Yep. Right? Okay, here's another pour of the pages. Oh, man. And Reed just says, okay. Yeah. And you can see that. So hard to miss here. Right, the, the Impulse. percentage counter in your head. <laughs> right. <laughs> missing is going lower and lower and lower. Go up to 10 blue. 10 blue mana floating. Another oh, pour over the geez. pages. This is how it goes. Yep. So at this point, Nathan has all the mana in the world, just needs to find that ultimatum to close the game or a leer. Right. Okay, and that's a dark petition. So that should do it here now if you're Nathan Stoyer. He's cycling a Vizier of Tumbling Sands now just to get his mana count as high as possible and make sure that he has the colors that he needs. Right. Now he's putting the green mana in the pool. Okay, it's like, okay, I might be done drawing cards here. I'm, 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 I'm about to execute the end game plan very soon. Another pour. Now it's, a, do I just need more mana because I have right. Dark Petition? Do I just get Hidden Strings? Okay. Hidden Strings for the mana? Yeah. I think that's what he's going to do here, Paul. That does net you one mana on the exchange. Three mana for the recovery, two mana for the Hidden Strings. Six mana when you untap the Lotus Fields. Uh-oh, three black. Uh -oh, three black, three black that's, that's never the good sign. you Reed Duke. Reed's taking a look at the four cards in his hand and not seeing a lot of hope there. All right, looks like he found the ultimatum, or excuse me, Dark, dark Petition here. Dark Petition. I wonder if Reed is now just going to go for the impulse and try to tax the mana now. Of course, it's super unlikely that he can stop what Nathan's trying to do. Yeah, this, is there a window where if he made him pay four extra mana, it would actually yeah. matter? I, and I just don't see Nathan putting himself in a situation where he lose to, loses to a make disappear here. I agree. 
He's just had way too much access to his graveyard, all the cards that he's drawn this turn. Search it again in a second, um, but it's up to you. I'll go down to two black and three blue to hidden strings, targeting my two lotus fields. Okay. Again, this is super clean play here from right. Nathan. The, you can hear how he's describing his play. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. But you, you can see here, it's, it, you know, just there is so much on the line in these matches. We're no longer double elimination. You still need to make sure you do everything perfectly here, right? One small blunder with this deck and it can fall apart. Yes. So. so second copy of Dark Petition resolves this turn. You also heard him say, I'm going to search for something with the first Dark Petition. And then he put the deck down and he said, you can shuffle it, but I am going to search again in just a second, so it's up to you. Yeah. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Move to six blue. So six blue, three black floating from the Dark Petition, extra mana bonus. All right. Now has 14 mana. Dringsing it up here, and as you can see, He's going to generate way, way too and much mana. He now he does have the ultimatum there. You see that. Going to get the three green here. That should lock it up here for Nathan Stoyer. You can use that to go get Omniscience, Behold, the Beyond, and Dark Petition. As you can see, Nathan has access to seven mana here putting it out of reach for Reed Duke to be able to do any type of interaction, and Reed's, Reed's dead. Yeah. So now what's going to happen is Nathan's just going to eventually find a way to cast Mastermind's Acquisition, go get Approach of the Second Sun, tutor for it again, and then cast it again for the kill. Yeah, the way you actually win kind of pick your poison right, right. just like, <laughs> what do i want to get out of my sideboard to win here right it's like here's the pool of pioneer cards here's how much mana you have you can figure it out and th that's the sideboard lots of options mm -hmm. lots of different creatures there but oh looks like you're going for a leer there instead i mean look at nathan's graveyard right, right. fully stocked yard he's got omniscience leer and behold there Mm, do I want to give you Lear? Look at that graveyard. I'm I'm good. Uh, Sorry, you're good. <coughs> I'll start by casting omniscience. Resolves. Remember, he does get to cast these off of the emergent ultimate. Now everything right. is free. Uh, can I reorder how I want to do things? I, I announced doing something, but I I'm still thinking about it. Uh, Probably not. Mm. The fact your opponent said resolves okay, is yep. extra information you gain, so. Yeah. yeah, and these are the small little things. I don't think it's going to matter anyways. Right. Uh, resolves. Okay, I discard my hand. Search for three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you can just search for uh, multiple tutor effects here, right, with the omniscience in play. Masterminds, perhaps a Leer. And another Dark Petition, I believe Nathan's List plays too. Although I'm not sure if, you've, if he's already cast both of them. He has cast both. Okay. But there's also, of course, Bal we'll there's also Balaged Recovery mm -hmm. that you can search for. So any number of ways here. The world is Nathan's oyster here. Yeah, this is just going through the motions. And, you know, Reed, of course, needs to have Nathan do this. We are in the top eight of a pro tour. This isn't the testing house where you say, okay, yeah, you got me. You know, this is where you say, no, no, I want to, you know, you got to do it. Nathan has inevitability here, but um, yeah, but you still have to do it. Yeah, and were you going to be on the play again next game? And after what he saw with that Boseju line, you know, we're still going to be playing a game one situation and just considering all the different ways that Nathan can, can disrupt him. Nathan does seem to be pausing a bit here. He just. Uh, flip through the graveyard, perhaps just mapping out he's what he can get. Yeah, but he's I mean, drawn a bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. So th this happens where you go, okay, I'm going to tutor for these cards always. But when you've cast three pour over the pages, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I've already discarded this card. I don't have this anymore, so let's look for something else. But there's always something 
relevant that you can get here. We'll take a look the, here. The three cards that you named, Paul, he went for the Balagad Recovery, as well as Lear and Mastermind's acquisition. I'll start by casting Mastermind's choosing a card outside of the game. Sure. Of course, choosing a card outside of the game in this context means your sideboard. I'm going to choose Approach of the Second Sun. I'm going to cast Approach of the Second Sun. Remember, he doesn't have to pay mana for any of these because of omniscience. You it if you... um, yes. Okay. Well, wait, it says choose a card you own from outside of the game. Actually, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, but you know it's my sideboard, so. I'm going to impulse in response. That's fine. All right, Reed's finally going to fire off the yep. impulse. <laughs> but. Okay, approach is good. You're at uh, 25. Yeah. Approach of the second sun resolves. It will be now seventh from the top. But also searchable. All right. I just need to cast Balagad Recovery or Leer. Sure. I'll cast a Balagad Recovery. It's pretty cool to not have to pay for your spells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It makes things a lot easier, Marshall. It does. Okay. Yeah. None of this. All right. And there's a concession from Reed Duke. Game number one goes to Nathan Stoyer. Man, it feels like Reed had a window there, but he wasn't quite able to capitalize. And uh, Nathan Stoyer punished him the next turn and eventually picked up the win. I mean, there was a World Spine Worm on the battlefield there for Duke, and it wasn't even nearly enough. Yeah, it wasn't. And, um, yeah, I mean, Nathan just going through the motions there. Um, and, and, again, Reed just making sure that Nathan doesn't mess up any any of those turns, right? Even in that turn where he did cast the the ultimatum, there was a little bit of sequencing there where he, if had he cast the Behold first, maybe that would have been better. But I mean, despite that, obviously Nathan's not going to make the mistake there, but you have to take your time. You have to take your time. It was kind of deterministic, right? But at the end of the day, you don't want to mess that up. You know you're playing against one of the best players out there in Reed Duke and uh, just need to make sure that you just do everything cleanly. And he did. Right. And you know, this is a match one, game one of the top eight here under the lights, you know, you're not at home, right? Yeah. You're not playing on arena. You know, you don't have the cat on your lap with the blanket and the, you know, like you're out here, you know, there's people watching. So there's a little bit of jitter sometimes there. Nathan didn't seem bothered though. He just kind of cruised through his turn there and picked up the win in game number one. Now we're going to be setting up for another game one, if you will. It's game two of the match, but um, this one will be pre-sideboarded as well. We're going to take a short break. But when we come back, we will have game number two of our opening quarterfinal match. Don't go anywhere.
and welcome back to coverage here of Pro Tour Phyrexia. We are in Philadelphia, and we're in the top eight here on a Sunday. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for coverage of our opening quarterfinal match. This is between Reed Duke and Nathan Stoyer, and uh, we've got one game under our belts here, Nathan Stoyer able to combo off there in impressive fashion, made a huge amount of mana, eventually got Omniscience onto the battlefield, and uh, he figured it out from there. We're going to uh, join our match once again in game number two, but it'll be played as a game one, if that makes sense. No sideboards yet. After this game, any games that are played will have the sideboards involved, but uh, this one's going to be a pre-boarded game because we're playing best three out of five for this. This is an elimination match between the two players. One or the other will be going home. Yeah, so um, light disruption, mm. but disruption nonetheless. The disruption that Nathan presented in that last game is what won him that game, right? Reed Duke did have the creativity for two. Boseju broke that up, and Reed had to wait a turn for that World Spine Worm. Then Nathan untapped and won. So those are the little things that those players need to be mindful of. It's like, can they get combo off? What can I do to stop that combo? Reed's got a couple of counter spells, right? Make Disappear and Spell Pierce, and Nathan has those lands. There could even be instances where perhaps Nathan thinks, okay, I'm too far away from comboing you off. I'm just going to maybe Sylvan Scrying for Notawara. Right? Maybe that'll just buy me some more time. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. I mean, you know how it is, right? It, it, the, the time is measured in turns for these combo decks, and the difference between one turn to the next is huge, yeah. right? It could, it could be everything. Um, by the way, both players mulliganing to six here mm. for our game number two. Okay. Okay. Not I, was, I was just wondering if, if we both declare keep before that, no, that happens. Like I said, to, to be able to keep your hand, it needs to be legal, and to be legal, you need to have put the card in the hand. Understood. Sorry about that. No, I mean, that's okay. I'm just like, explaining the technical reasoning, because otherwise it sounds campaign to mm -hmm. That's our judge. Kevin giving an explanation for Reed's question. Is this better? Yeah, yeah great. I'll Reed, always helpful Thanks with coverage. Thank you. Reed, those die. Dice are there to uh, signal you and I, Paul, that uh, there have been some mulligans that have happened. You can see right now Nathan's looks like a bit of a painful decision for him about what card to put back. Yeah, the, Nathan's hand this time is not ideal. No two mana way to search for anything. No Lotus Field, no Impulse, no Sylvan Scrying, and Nathan is shipping it oh. back and going down oh. to five. Oh. Okay, so I was under the impression that he had kept and was deciding what to put back, but that was not the case at all. Yeah. He didn't like it at all, and he's gonna go to five. So Reed gets to be on the play with a six card hand against Nathan with at most a five card hand. And I mean, look at Reed's hand, right? It's, it's a little bit on the slower side because you have maybe a turn five combo, but you've got to make this appear you've, you've got the big score into the creativity, so he does have the combo ready. Just needs to find some mana sources. All right, let's see if Nathan can get a five. He can keep his hands on. How well uh, does this deck mulligan in your mind, Paul, the uh, uh, Nathan's deck? Excuse me? How, how well does it mulligan? You know, it, some it, decks are pretty it's, forgiving. It's okay. And some are really the, the problem is with this deck, though. It's you kind of want that critical mass. Yeah. You want hand disruptions. You, you want you want card draw effects. You want the ultimatum, but you also need to continue hitting your land drops, right? Okay. So it is kind of tough. But Nathan also is looking for a specific specific set of cards. So. You really don't want to mulligan, but that hand game too was just so rough, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't have a Lotus Field, didn't have a Thespian Stage, didn't have a way to find a land. It's really important to find a way to get those mana sources because you have a lot of action spells in your deck. Okay, he did keep the five, and we are underway here. Spire Bluff Canal for Reed Duke. Botanical Sanctum for Stoyer starts things out. No one mana plays for either player. Go. Mutavault go here from Duke. He's going to leave up Make Disappear, which, you know, if he can nab something with it, he'll be pretty happy. But so far, it's just going to be Sanctum, Sanctum, go here. Duke's going to draw his card for the turn after a little pause to at least represent the possibility of something other than a Make Disappear. And I, and I wonder if Nathan just cycles a Vizier just to try to find a Lotus Field or something that gets him a Lotus Field, mm. right? 
He's got to be feeling some amount of pressure pretty quickly here. Now, this is going to be a huge difference, though, because Reed's going to say go. You know, if he had played Fable here, now Nathan really has to get worried about doing stuff here and now. But just land go, maybe he can get away with keeping it. Let's see what he does. Yeah, maybe a way to turn. Not really in danger of losing on turn four. But yeah, yeah, gonna yeah. dig, gonna dig. You gotta use some of that mana here. Vizier Tumbling Sands cycling there. Lotus Field. Just straight up cycling. Sylvan Scrying. Sylvan Scrying will likely hmm. meet. Can oh, interest you in there is a Lotus Field. There you go. Lotus Field. He's got Just the naturally double drawn out of the pages. Because Sylvan Scrying would have been countered there. Yes. With the make disappear. Yeah, so now all of a sudden Nathan Stoyer's the threatening one, but Reed Duke definitely has some action. Take a look at that. Big score, double indomitable creativity, Ooh. even an impulse to go with his make disappear. Yeah, but, but there's I mean, Despian Stage Lotus Field. But this turn, he's not going to go off, right? He's not going to go off this turn. I mean, he, he has Vizier of Tumbling Stands. You can maybe, um, you can go float, pay three. You can cycle the Vizier, that does net you a mana, and mm -hmm. then you can start thinking about whether or not you, it is correct to go off this turn. For example, you cycle, you, you untap the Lotus Field, you now have access to five mana. You can then cast Hidden Strings, and you have access to more mana. Right. But it looks like he's going to wait a turn here instead. Does have up Oseju. So if, again, if Reed goes land creativity for two, Nathan can break it up again, right? Might want to go for three. And then has a decent shot of going off next turn, right? Yes. So... With Reed on a being mold of tapped five? out, I mean, yeah. But does Reed have any other choices here? He does have make this appear. <coughs> he does have a mutable vault in play, right? So, okay. Creativity targeting my two wow, he's okay, just gonna go Nathan's for it gonna here. Do this again. This the is exact the turn. Same play, and you're gonna cycle here for the extra mana because now you can go Besaju and copy Thespian. Same exact thing Lotus he did Field. last game. He did the exact same play. Ooh, and there's that Besaju again. Oh, no, that's gonna be one mana short this time, right? Oh no, no, he's got the two mana. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he did literally the exact same thing. And Reed's not going to have mana for a counterspell. He could represent. He can represent spell pierce, right? Because this treasure is going to go off, and it's just going to find either Xenagos or World Spine Worm. Sure. And I mean, take a look at Nathan's hand. Unless he super misses, right? Each pour of the pages nets you a mana. So we're on eight mana, hidden, string, hidden strings nets you four mana, so that's 12 mana. After he casts the spells that he just has in his hand, he's got his draw step and six more cards to look at here. I like his chances. Wow, if Nathan Stoyer can pick up a win here that on a you. mulligan to five on the draw. Okay, there it is. This is really feels like a replay of game number one. Oh God, what a mold of five. I mean, that natural Lotus Field. That was incredible. On turn three, off the cycle. Totally. Let's see if All Nathan right, Story can go. put together a win. Combo as, time. As you mentioned, there's one spell pierce in the list here for Duke, and he does get to represent that. But honestly, it might be worse here that Nathan's on five because he's probably going to feel the pressure to just go for it here and say, if you have Spell Pierce, fine. Or maybe he can even play around. He can just has a hidden string. So yeah. you just start with hidden strings, yeah. and then everything the coast is clear, yeah. right? So there he goes. Wow. Ten mana. Now the question is, can he find what he needs off of these two copies of Pour the Pages? The answer is almost always yes. Yeah, but not I, I, I guess if he has six lands on top of his deck, or he just finds only lands and hidden strings, right? Uh, and nope. and Sylvan Scryings. There's Pour over the Pages number one. Discard a Lotus on top. Is that another Pour? And Nathan Stoyer find the goods. Okay. So impulse is also really big. Scry. Scry one with Temple of Mystery. With all the mana that he has, it might even be a little bit better than poor. Uh, he also he just kept it on top, by either. the way. So no good oh, news that for is Duke rough. there. Green and two boost, so I'm down to 
Sorry, wait. I had five mana. I'll go up to eleven mana. And I'm going to cast four with five blue and one green in my pool. Okay? Yep. Yep, six mana left yep. over. One, two, thr whoop, three. Discarding. Oh, there's Mastermind's Acquisition. There what else did he Mastermind's find? Mastermind's Acquisition. This year as well gets him a little deeper, and the double impulse, yeah, he's not stopping right. from here. So now you just you just have to be really careful with your mana so you don't get spell pierced. That's the only thing Nathan's probably thinking about. And it certainly feels like he has the tools to uh, make sure that doesn't happen at this point. Nine mana. Because you could also just acquisition for a Leer. I don't know if he has the mana to do everything that he wants, though. Yeah, it looks like he's counting up right now. You saw him thumb through the graveyard. I think yeah. he was thinking the same thing you were, Paul, and he's just saying, well, what do I got here? Yeah. Now, remember, Vizier sure. Tumbling Sands also nets you one mana when you cycle, so... All right. There's Mastermind's acquisition on the stack. Search for or choose a card so you, can you get, own from you, outside the game. So you can get ultimatum here, right? Because you have access to eight mana. If you cycle the Vizier, that gives you access to nine mana. Then you can cast ultimatum and still pay for spell, spell pierce. Beautiful. It's very nice for Nathan that Reed is tapped down to just one mana. He, right. he knows exactly there's one card in the entire list here of his main deck that he has to worry about. Yeah, could also get Leer. But he got ultimatum. He did. Go down to three blue, Vizier on top. Draw a card off the Vizier. Three blue, three black, three green. And there you go. And it's time Nine for the ultimatum. Mana, an emergent ultimatum. Emergent ultimatum. One blue, one green left. Or, excuse me, one blue, one black left. Uh, okay. Yep, resolved. Right. And here we go. The fireworks begin now for Nathan Stoyer. This is his march to victory off of a mulligan to five on the draw. And Reed also put together the combo. He did. On his own turn. I mean, so far, Boseju is the MVP. Man, frame right. that thing, Nathan. There's just no way to interact with it, right? You can't protect your you can't protect your your treasures. Usually, when you have that artifact, especially in game one, you're like, I'm pretty safe. Yeah. You don't have any removal spells. I'm good. But this deck plays three copies of Vasaju. Wow. Yeah, the channel. Just not interactable. For this blue red deck, or really for any deck. So, going through the graveyard, but I imagine. So, Omniscience, Behold, and Leer. And Reed is once again forced to make a decision that lets Nathan do whatever he wants anyway. Shuffle Omniscience back. Put the big the kid back, back in. Leer. Okay. And, and this is on the stack. Okay. So he casts right. Leer. Leer's on the battlefield, then puts Behold on the stack. It resolves. So now you search up three things here. <laughs> All right, and okay. that's going to do it. Reed Duke's not going to make him go through the motions this time. Nathan Stoyer is up two games to zero on Reed Duke here. Wow. This is not how Reed wanted to start off his top eight. Yeah. He is very much up against it. His chances of coming back here, very low. Uh, and, Winning and three I, games in a row is tough. I guess I take it back. Mulling to five, no problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, it's not even like the game went that long. No. He just kind of found all the pieces that he needed. But it was kind of a perfect hand if you think about it. Yeah. Right? You just naturally drew naturally drew both Lotus Field, Despian Stage, and had the Bostage up with a bunch of card draw spells in hand. Kind, that, of, per kind of perfect. Right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's going to be tough here because I think game one was... Um, where Reed maybe have maybe had a really solid shot because I think after sideboard Nathan gets to bring in some more problematic um, disruptive elements. Mm. Um, one card that Monty touched on at the desk was Fading Hope. That's fine. Fading yeah. Hope is just another really cheap way to disrupt that combo, right? If you just board in the Fading Hopes and you just cast it, it's all of a sudden you don't die to the World Spine Worm, right? So then what do you do if your opponent has something like a Fading Hope? Then then do you 
do you go to the Hullbreaker Horror Plan? Fading Hope still works on that, mm -hmm. right? Because sure, it returns it to your hand, but it's not like you're casting an expensive spell to bounce the horror, right? You're just paying one mana, and you can just do it over and over again. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious where, what they want to do. Reed's deck does have access to a lot of counters, mm -hmm. which should help the matchup. But then, you, then you're on Nathan's side, and you go, well, if he's going to have a bunch of counters, and is not going to be leading on an instant kill combo, do I start bringing in my uncounterable creatures? Oh. Right? There's, so there's, there's lots of different layers here, and I'm curious what Nathan chooses to go with here, because sure, you want to bring in the Fading Hope to disrupt the combo, but if you look at Nathan's sideboard, I mean, we're looking at cards like Dragon Lord Jamocha, Sphinx of the Final Word, which are excellent if your opponent's on the, I'm going to try to counter every everything that you're trying to do. It's a tough puzzle to solve here for Reed Duke. One big card that Nathan has to be really mindful of in this matchup, that's Narset's Reversal. Oh, because yeah. If you, cast, if you cast an ultimatum and your opponent Narset's re uh, cast Narset's Reversal, all of a sudden they could get, they could counter your spell. Well, not counter it, but I guess kind of a delay you for a turn, right? It bounces it back to your hand, and then you can go, what? You can get a Hullbreaker Horror, maybe a, maybe a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, maybe you keep Inner World Spine Worm, I don't know, right? But you can do stuff like that, and so Nathan has to be really careful if Reed does keep up two blue mana, that that card might be a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thanks, Mike. And, <laughs> wow, fourth Boseju, by the way. In the sideboard. Really? That card is the absolute nightmare for Reed today. Thanks. Thanks. Much appreciated. Some waters for our players here. It is important to stay hydrated, Paul. I agree. We're really dropping the controversial I know. takes on the broadcast today. Only the hottest of takes yeah. on Sunday. You want to make top eight of a pro tour? Grab a glass of water. You're going to have to do a lot of other stuff too, but it's a start. Yeah, probably get good is also a good get one. Get good. Get good. Put in your 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. Both of these two have certainly done oh. that. Oh, yeah. These are ma S magic similar. online grinders. Th yeah, they're actually I mean, similar trajectory as far as like how they came you know, into the pro scene through magic online. Yeah, had a lot of success on magic online. Both mox one mox champions, mox champions mm -hmm. and then go. You know what? I think I'm ready for some tabletop domination. Yeah, yeah. Reed, um, you know, came onto the scene about ten years ago or so. Nathan has actually been around for a similar amount of time, but he was just young. You know, he was a he was a kid when he started. It, I mean, it's just wild to see his his ascension. Really, it really is. Even at the start of last year, he was a player to watch. Yeah, like watch out, this guy. He's really great. We, everybody's played against him. They know how good he is. It's just a matter of time. And then you thought maybe he would gradually work his way up, maybe get, you know, qualify for a bunch of events. But nope, it's just like, I'm going to win the World Championship. And guess what? I'm going to run it back here. I'm going to top eight. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. I actually, I was going to play Lotus Field until yeah. like 9 p.m. the day before the event. <laughs> cold feet. Move. I don't think the deck is exceptional or anything. I mean, it's good, but has its own set of issues. I definitely liked, we, we found the layer of Hydra in our deck and, and that really helped for some auto green, which kind of pushed me over the edge of playing it just because if they masterminds, oh, cool. if they stone brained you, you could just kill them the next turn without uh, masterminds in your deck. So what do you do, you tap all their blockers? Yeah, you like grazer it into play, copy it with stage, like after making omniscience and then tap their blockers or auto wire it. Point. Yeah, you'll achieve both. Thanks. I like the Dragon Lord Dramoko too. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a 10 p.m. addition to the deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Reed was deciding what deck to play at 9 p.m. At 10 p.m., the last sideboard cards were going in for Nathan. In against, like, oh man, Marshall. The good old days, Paul. Table top magic. <laughs> Live interactions. Kind of this is fantastic. It, so if you have the I love it. Good convo. Let's get playing. Now, nope, last few minute decisions here. It is funny though. That that is a classic. What deck am I going to play? The Everybody goes it. through it. Everybody goes through it. Yeah, and then you know you're really organized when you're worried about what cyborg cards you're going to put in, but you've already picked the deck. Yeah, right? so that, that's the pro. Deck team. submissions were due at, on midnight, and I was 
tracking who were submitting the decks, and it was like 8 p.m., and there were still 120 decks to be submitted. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, yeah. Uh, We've all been there. And it never goes away. I, you know, I was right. talking to Luis. He flew in and had to submit his deck. We had a plan to record the podcast when he got in, and he said, I'm not going to be able to. I'm still deciding what deck I'm playing. It's like, okay. <laughs> and he's been at this for years and years. Yeah, it sounds like a close call there for Reed. He almost played this Lotus Field deck. Yeah. Said he got cold feet, perhaps not enough reps. And also just the team put a lot of work into building up this deck and thinking through all the options. So I think Reed also just kind of liking what what the team strategy was. And look, sure, he's down 2-0 here. But, I mean, let's not take anything away. Reed did top eight this Pro Tour as well. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Totally. Can't be regretting that decision. No, I, 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 I was yeah, kind of interested in how he said that because it made it sound like maybe he was I, thinking, I, like, I wish I, I, I would have, but yeah, he did get top eight here, so uh, can't be too bumped. Okay. It looks like we are all set here for game number three, and your attention should very much be on Reed Duke's side of the table because all of the pressure is on him. Nathan just needs to win one of the next three games to advance to the semis and eliminate Reed Duke from the competition. So it's it's Reed. It's on his shoulders. He's got to find a win here to at least try to get something going. And we'll see if he can do so. Yeah, and it does look like Reed has is leaning into uh, the more controlling strategy here. You see Narset's reversal. You see disdainful stroke, and. Looks like he's he boarded out the combo. Ex oh, excuse me, the the World Spine Worm Xenagos combo. Okay. So going full control here with the Hullbreaker Horrors. Has a couple of copies of the Indomitable Creativity just because it's nice to search out the Horrors, but doesn't have all four of those either. And there we go. Fire Prophecy also still in here. And uh, that'll take down the Voyaging Seder as Nathan's turn to play. Seder, you know kind of a mana elf style creature 18. until you get a lotus field on the battlefield and then all of a sudden it's a turbo. And this is pretty nice here for Reed. He's got Fable of the Mirror Breaker down after having killed the two drop there from Nathan. So everything coming up Reed Duke in the early stages. Haven't seen any big action from Nathan. Does he have? Sure. Okay, well he's got Impulse. He's looking for a looking lotus field, for a here. field here. He may have. Does he have one in his hand already? No, he no, doesn't. No, he doesn't. I don't think he found one either. Yeah, there is a Sylvan Scrying, I believe. Okay. So could take that play Botanical Sanctum four turn. He's got to fall way and, behind here, right? Yeah, take a look at Nathan's hand, right? We, we kind of I touched on it a little bit, but bringing in that Fading Hope and also bringing in some number of uncounterable effects here. So it could be playing a little more straight up magic, right? There's the Fading Hope, by the way, for the Goblin Shaman. Gets to scry one if it was three or less. In this case, it was zero, so he'll get to scry. Hmm, he's really thinking about keeping that one on top. Yeah. Not a no-brainer. Nathan missing a few pieces. Needs to find the Thespian stage as well. He's got the Sylvan scrying. Reed with a nice controlling hand here. Yeah, I'm curious to see what he does with Chapter 2. Found a Hullbreaker Horror. Hmm. What do you discard do you, here? Do you want that in your hand at this point? I think you probably want the two-mana counters. Yeah. Right? They seem more impactful. Perhaps you discard a Spell Pierce. You want to continue hitting your land drops. You could still win with just one Hullbreaker Horror if your plan is to maybe go for the creativity. But yeah, Reed's hand is very good, so this is this is tough. He's in the tank right now about... I think you want to discard at least one card. Yeah. He is going to discard the whole Breaker Horror. All right, playing for the late game here. Needs Wants every single interactive card possible. Hall of Storm Giants, land drop. And this is going to be a cycled vision. Nice. And playing around Spell Pierce here, right? Playing around Spell Pierce and make this appear by going for the psych. Oh, excuse me. No, he's not. If he has an untapped land. Right, right, right. We'll see what he does he's here. Probably just looking for a Lotus Bloom, excuse me. Yeah, he's going to play Besage you and just pass the turn back. 
And that's going to prompt chapter three here. Did not go table. for that Sylvan scrying. So no. Nope. Was playing around any of those cheap two mana uh, counters. Mm -hmm. That becomes a reflection of Kiki Jiki. And there's a Muta Vault. Not a ton of pressure from Reed. He does have a bunch of counter spells now. And Nathan does have Sphinx of the Final Word in hand. Wow, so there's a goal. And Reed can't counter this. Or I, I suppose you can go Spell Pierce and make this appear. That doesn't yeah. feel especially good. But at the same time, do you want to just prevent Nathan from finding this Lotus Field? But the thing is, you also have to think there's so many ways for Nathan to get that Lotus Field. You can just draw it. There's a bunch of impulses. Is this the type of card that you want to counter? You could also, <laughs> you could also Narset's rever Reversal if you want to continue hitting your land drops. I kind of like that idea. And then if he <laughs> goes for it again, you Spell Pierce. Yeah. He's actually going to okay. sacrifice the reflection All here right. to make Nathan pay four. Yeah. So that is going to put Sylvan Scrying in the bin, but at a fairly steep cost to read. I, you know, his deck isn't really super set up to Two. take advantage. Two ball. Uh oh, here we go. The Muta Vault beatdown <laughs> begins. All right. This is a, a slower game here. Nathan might try to bait some counters with those pours. If he finds land number five, just goes poor. Just fight through your counters if possible. I mean, if he's only going to take two a turn, he can do that. Right. I mean, he's not in danger right now of being comboed off at all. And Nathan could also just think, maybe you just don't have the combo. I mean, there's a Hellbreaker Whore in the graveyard. So there's much less fear of just dying instantly, right? You're mm -hmm. not going to take 30. Right. Is it, is it two? Two. It's the two ball. <laughs> it's the two. Muta Vault in again. Oh, man, Narcissus Reversal, though, on poor. Oh, that's gross. That is, that's kind of disgusting. And he also has an extra Narcissus Reversal to give here, so he right? could go for a value reversal. Right. Oh, is he going to do it? I think, I he think. He also has Spell Pierce, which is, like, really tempting to burn here. Oh, here He's go. going for the Narcissus Reversal on Sorry. poor. Oh, of the pages. man. That is. <laughs> Draw three, discard one on tap two. <laughs> that is awesome for two mana. Oh, and he f look at the action that he found off of that. Wow. He oh. found some heavy hitters. Found a Hullbreaker Horror. And Indomitable Creativity. So probably discarding Creativity because mm -hmm. there's no other targets <laughs> to get. Both of them. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, man. Now he's got big score into Hullbreaker Horror eventually. The thing is, Nathan doesn't really have a choice. I think he just needs to just play out his spells. Reed only plays two Narcissus Reversals in his deck. You need to get something going. Look, you need to unload your hand. I mean, look at what Nathan's working with. I mean, the other alternative would have been to just not cast poor, try to hit land seven, play the Sphinx, and then play your spells because your spells become uncounterable. Mm -hmm. But I believe that might not even work against... Narset's Reversal, because Narset's Reversal returns, it, returns it, does not counter it. Here's another pour over the pages from Stoyer. Are we going to see it again? I, I mean... You have so many hard counters there. Uh, oh, he's going to go for big score here. Yeah, you got it. Big score. Big score first, for the information. You could, of course, just spell pierce this, right? Yes. And it is tempting to use spell pierce in such a high leverage spot, but... Yeah, Reversal, you know, Reversal just feels is so good. really good. <laughs> okay. Going to use the Pierce here. And this does, uh, you know, tap out Nathan's story. Not that he has counters anyway. But any interaction that he would have had is now turned off. And with two treasures and five lands, he is in Holebreaker Horror range, though... You can just do that whenever he feels like it, I suppose. You do see the downside here. We did talk about how great Boseju was, mm -hmm. but there's one in play, and Nathan drew a second one. Would have loved to have that just be a forest, right, mm -hmm. to hit your land drops. Okay, instead, Reed's going to continue along this uh, more controlling path. He's going to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, you have access to Negate and Reversal and Stroke here. 
five mana available. It's going to be difficult for Nathan to resolve anything other than Sphinx of the Final Word for the next few turns. Yeah. He's Nathan, stuck on five. Nathan did find Lotus Field. So. That's a step. That's a step. You have hidden strings. Even with just one Lotus Field, that does net you one mana. So you could potentially float two mana, play Lotus Field, play Hidden Strings, and then cast Sphinx of the Final Word, right? Wait, no, or are you one mana short? You are one mana short. Okay. No, 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 you're not one mana short because you can also untap your land. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's And then you stack the Boseju, okay. So Reed has to be careful here. He has to think, well, you could potentially play an uncounterable effect here, right? Dragonlord Dramoka or Sphinx of the Final Word. So three mana available. Does he need to fight over this hidden string? Do you negate? I think you might. Reed's definitely thinking about it. Yeah. They were talking about... You have Loka, the, but, you know, same yeah, thing here for you, you You have the counter for the big spell, right? You have the Disdainful Stroke. You do have the Narcissus Reversal. I think you go for Negate. negate. Reed is going to negate Good the negate. hidden negate. strings. Good Negate. Well played by Duke there. And that's going to shut off the turn here for Stoyer. He just has to pass the turn back. Draw. So when are we going to see Holebreaker Horror hit? My draw step. Maybe never. <laughs> he might not need it. Yeah. I mean, to start chipping for a, a solid. The thing is, if uh, there's yeah, ever a turn right. where Nathan just says go, that's when, that's when you would see it. But I think okay. next turn, if Nathan does have a Basaju, he might just slam Sphinx of the Final Word. Yeah. When he does, we can't counter it in any way. So he just goes play Hallbreaker Horror, untap, then cast something. Cast. In this instance, it's big score. Oh, he's gonna cast it now. Okay. I don't know what he tapped. And he discarded Shark Typhoon. No, this is to the um, no, this is to the Fable. Oh, he discarded those to Fable. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. All right, Goblin Shaman in. There's another treasure token. Your turn. And he's just gonna pass the turn back. Okay, so All right. this is a big one for Nathan. And and he does have an impulse, so he can cast an impulse to bounce this. Yeah. So this is normally about as scary as it gets if you're in Reed Duke's seat, but he actually has a way to get this thing back off the battlefield. Can he also present lethal if he does so? Oh, it's got hexproof. What am I saying? What does? Yeah. Oh, the, the final word. does. Oh. Haven't seen this in play for a okay, while. So okay, but, but, but he can present lethal here, right? You can attack for... He, and I'll, by the way, he bounced it with it on the stack. Of remember? course, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got a Hall of Storm Giants down there. That's seven, eight, nine, plus seven. It's just 14, right? 16, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nathan's at 14. So right, 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 right. We have a goal here. Yeah, that should do it. Yeah, and yeah. again, the Hexproof doesn't matter while it's on the stack, right? right so right. He, he was able to have just enough mana there. Yeah, the, the and we're going to go to game number four here. Reed Duke on the board picks up a win over Nathan Storyer. Finally gets one from Nathan, who didn't have yeah. everything this time, even though he kept seven. Yeah, the bounce effect. Finding that impulse was, was pretty big there for Reed. Now, despite that, even if you didn't bounce it, right, mm -hmm. you have both the hull breaker horror and you attack with the hull, yeah. it's just going to jump block. Exactly. Right? You That's what I was thinking, yeah. Right. Like, you still activate your land and you attack, and it's a jump block. Yeah, it's so. a cute 5-5, five five, right? Just a little baby 5-5 five five Yeah, 5-5, five five, that's, that's, that's whatever. Yeah, how about a 7-8 seven and a 7-7? Seven seven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Reed can breathe, you know, emotionally speaking, a bit of relief here. Okay, he's on the board. So that counter plan, or the controlling strategy... Very, very strong from Reed, right? And not only that, a really big um, turn there was negating that hidden string. Yes, it was. Because that unlocked everything. Because if he doesn't negate the hidden strings, Nathan can then play the Sphinx. And then on the following turn, he can then play one of his big spells, right? But Hullbreaker Horror just does such a good job because, again, it doesn't counter things. It returns things, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it does. I wonder if Nathan is going to make any adjustments. Right. I'm wondering if you're on the Hullbreaker Horror Plan, does it, 
does it are the uncounterable effects even that good? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. If you think the games go kind of long, and it's likely that they're going to get a horror in play, but what else can you do? Right. right? That's the question that always comes up here, right? Like, like even if we flip the tables back to Reed, you know, he has the ability to kind of take this more controlling route or to go for the more combo-oriented route, and he could even switch back and forth to kind of keep Nathan off balance. But one is probably just a lot better than the other. Yeah. Right, where they're not, it's not like, well, these are two close strategies and it's just a rock, paper, scissors thing. One of them probably is just better, right? Yeah. And Reed's going to have to pick that one. And I'm assuming it's the control route. Yeah. Also, keep in mind in that game, I mean, Nathan didn't find a Lotus Field until For very late. Quite a while, yeah. Right? So we're used to him having it kind yeah. of all. Right? I, I, if Nathan is able to find a Lotus Field with Thespian Stage, he's going to have a huge man advantage. And in matchups where it's kind of this combo deck or, or kind of you're both kind of going back and forth doing this dance with playing around counter spells, it's oftentimes the player with more mana that, that comes out on top. So that's what Nathan's going to be looking for. That game, he was just kind of forced to just cast all of his expensive spells and played right into uh, Reed's post-board strategy. But um, the priority for Nathan is to find that Lotus Field and develop that mana advantage. Because what, once you get that in play early, once you get Despian Stage plus Lotus Field, what are you going to do? Counter every single hidden strings? That's tough. Yeah, you can't keep up. Okay. So Nathan wins the first two games in short order. Reed, you know, it started to feel maybe a little bit like, is it going to be one of those days? Right, where right. I show up, I've prepared, I slept, I had a good breakfast, I'm ready to go, and then, you know, you just kind of get rocked in the first two games, and you think, oh, no, is it is it just not my day? But getting a win here, you know, calms the nerves a little. I'll tell you, Nathan's a pretty cool customer while he's playing. You know, he yeah. is dialed in. And this next game is going to be absolutely massive. A huge turning point. Because if Nathan can find it, he's done. He moves on. And Reed's going to have to settle for just another top eight on his resume. But if Reed can find a win here, we're right back to it. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. One game to decide the whole thing. It's like 10 percentage points in Pioneer. Yep. <laughs> I think he's talking about play draw. Right. I mean... Yeah, you, the, these pros, they, they look at all the numbers, all the edges. How will this affect this matchup? By what percentage? What percentage of the field do you think each deck will present itself? Yeah, play draw is always important in Magic, of but, course. you know, with these combo decks, right? it definitely matters. And, um, yeah, what... You know, you know, with that in mind, you know, among other things like being down a game, Reed, you know, once again, kind of has his back to the wall. Here. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is huge pressure. You still him. have to win two more matches here against arguably the best player in the world. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to define, you know, who the best player is. It's very difficult, but I mean, scoreboard, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right. If, if you just want to shortcut it, like, well, he's a Give world champion. Give me some compelling arguments. He won, like, he's everything he played last year. <laughs> including the world championship and then boom he's immediately back at a pt top eight he's just so I dialed don't in. think you could make a strong argument for anybody other than nathan stoyer right. right now best of luck you too all right niceties yeah yeah aside let's get to battle in here between these two. Ooh, i see time walk <laughs> the, the green time walk. Yeah, I see time walk. Oh, there it is. Did you know that time walk has... Somebody reached? put time walk up there very fast. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. Seems to have some type of shortcut for Arboreal Grazer yeah, to appear Probably on key bound or something. All right, there's a mulligan from Reed, not where he wants to be. Yeah. Will Nathan do the sportsman-like thing and join him in a mulligan or keep the seven? Yeah, and I mean, with that grazer, it makes it easier for Nathan to play around effects like Spell Pierce and uh, make disappear. Ooh, and this is a decent start here, right? You have the turn one grazer into the temple, help find what you need. The Get that silver sitting there. Still yeah. have the Sphinx. 
could potentially play that turn four or five, right? Especially with the hidden strings. And it's going to be a while before we can actually get to the mana to cast. I think if the games go along, Reed just has a pretty big advantage, just given the fact that he can just play that horror end of turn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if Nathan can stick the Sphinx earlier, even turn five, right? It's going to be really tough for Reed. And that does look like a hand that can get that Sphinx of the final word into play a little early. All right. Does Reed have a six card hand he can keep? Reed's going to be on the draw here. If he keeps a decent six, that's okay. I see a make disappear, a negate, I am, and some lands. I imagine he's going to keep yeah, this. I, say, I saw like at least two lands and some spells. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, lands and spells keep. It looks like he's actually got four lands there, Paul. Yeah. Deciding what to toss away. Big score, negate, make, disappear. Oh, did he have a big score? Six. No, maybe not. Okay. All that right, would well, be ideal. He might have. We'll, we'll have right. to see. Yeah. <coughs> the stage you into Arboreal Grazer. There it is. There it is. See how fast that... Yeah. Wow. Ooh, and... A decision here already. Yeah, it was, a big, it was nice. a big score, Paul. So, always feels bad when your opponent kind of tanks on the scrag, oh. just because you know it's something good. Terrible. You're like, ah. Oh. What is it? Another Sylvan scrying? Reed's thinking bottom, 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 bottom. It's gonna go on top though for Nathan Destroyer. Are you happy with the top? I don't know. Not at all. Yeah. I mean, look how far behind Reed is already. Arboreal Grazer powering out lands. Yeah, Nathan's going to have that Lotus Field in play potentially lands. next turn. turn. And it's going to be land go here from Duke. Right. The coast is clear here to just Sylvan Scrying. Get the Lotus. Jeez, turn two Lotus already on the battlefield. Oh, and a, it, it looks like it was a Balagate Recovery, so it's kind of slow, right? But mm. you cast the Balagate Recovery to get back Sylvan Scrying, potentially, if you really want to find that Thespian stage. Which you do. Yeah. Nathan do, is also aware that the games do go out a little bit longer here, so... Just important to try to find your combo pieces. Okay. Duke has a land drop here to give him blue mana. And then he has at least a little bit of shields, right? The make disappear, the negate. Your turn. Yeah, so... Nathan can go Sanctum into casting Recovery. But not sure if he wants to go ahead and, and play Sylvan Scrying with, with two mana up on Reed's side because of the make disappear that right. Reed could have. Yeah, this is... It's a little bit awkward. This is where you kind of assume that whatever you put on the stack is likely to get countered here by Duke, so... Just be mana efficient. Yeah. He's just gonna burn his clunkiest spell here, the Balagad Recovery. And uh, Reed's facing decisions again so, already. So, so he knows that Nathan's gonna go for the Thespian stage here, so you have to counter this. Yep. Because next, because Nathan course, can have great. the mana to pay for make this appear next turn if he yep. plays a land this turn. Got to get it while the getting's good, and that's yeah. exactly what Reed does. So finally, he's able to slow down Nathan at least a little bit. So Nathan is one mana short from casting Sphinx of the Final Word. Jeez. You have four mana here in play. You cast Hidden Strings, and you go up to six. So if he can find an untapped land, he can go Hidden Strings into Sphinx of the Final Word. And he could just start beating down with that thing, right? I mean, yeah. usually use it to protect your combo or whatever, but... I this is such an awkward spot here. He drew another Lotus Field, but can't play anything. Oh, that's tough. Nathan just wants a land here. It would have actually been better for him to just play the Balagate Recovery as a land. Oh, funny. In hindsight. In funny. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. Okay, land go, though, for Duke. He finally has mana up for big score. Stoyer off to a really quick start, but a stumble there on that last turn meant he just did nothing. Yeah, so... Drew's card, he's like, go, didn't play, didn't cast anything. So now he can go Hidden Strings and try to resolve Lear, I suppose. Four blue. He's got four blue. 
Down to two blue hidden strings target these two. And once again, does Reed need to Do you negate? you go for negate here? Because yeah. he, Nathan might just might just cast it. Because he doesn't know that Nathan can go untap land Sphinx. Right. Right? Doesn't know if he can go untap land Dragon Lord Jamoka. Right. right? So, so it might just be correct here to go for the negate. You could also go big score into negate if he wants to just dig Burn. a little bit deeper. Yeah, those treasures... Right. They have value, but they're not quite as critical as when you're trying to combo off. Reed definitely wanting to get this big score resolved and really trying to decide if he can afford to wait to try to get that mana yeah. advantage. It worked really well for him last game to counter a hidden strings and set back Nathan a turn. But you can tell what a huge inflection point in this game this is right. for Duke. This he's fighting from target. behind, and he's just going to negate straight yeah. up. He's going to keep big straight score negate. in hand. And now Nathan has nothing. So that's two turns in a row that nothing gets moved forward there for Stoyer. Right. Duke finds indomitable creativity, creativity. with that's the big score. With the big score. He's leaning on this make disappear pretty hard. Oh, oh, and it's omniscient on the top. Okay. He's going to have to just pass it back again. This is going to be three turns in a row. No land drops for Stoyer, and he's not advancing his game plan. Big score. Make two tokens. Can creativity. And Stoyer has no counters, right? Right. Like, when Reed puts stuff on the stack, it's just happening. It's just resolving. He's just got Fading Hope and that Odawara that we talked about. Right. With the Besieges. But you'd have to think if those lands were in Nathan's hand, pretty likely for him to just ca play them this turn. So... If you, if you think in that instance, you have to go, well, probably a good chance you just don't have a land in your hand. Yes. Right to play. This is incredible. Reed Duke looked like he was way too far behind in the first couple of turns, but Nathan has not been able to capitalize on an early start. And Reed has been playing this blue-red control shell. Counter, counter, go. big score, go. All right. He's... he's, he's, he's He's being very conservative here because he, he's going, I want to make sure I keep up counter magic here, right? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I go for the creativity, I'm basically tapped out. Okay. Right? And I'm not going to have the mana if you try to go off. All right. Here's Lear. Going to have to counter right. that, right? Or yeah. Yeah, once Lear resolves, spells cannot be countered. Right, so it's go so time. You have to counter it now. Make disappear. Make disappear the Lear. Okay. Now the question, now Reed's thinking, do I need to channel Sokin Zen to make two tokens? Will that be a better exchange of mana? You can still keep up Fire Prophecy if you do, right? So you sack the treasure, make two tokens, next turn creativity for... I'm gonna make spirits channel. For two, then you can play a land and you'll still have up Fire Prophecy as a way to bounce a spell. Once he has... Right. The, uh, he just needs anything instant speed that he can put on the stack. Right. Okay. And that Arboreal Grazer is a juicy target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's been sitting there for a long time. Yeah. Although, does he just have the combo? I'm wondering if you should just attack... Oh, oh, oh look combo. at this! He's got the combo he back in! the combo! Did Reed Duke pull Whoa. that little one-two punch that you and I talked about, Paul? I was just expecting some seven eights. Are we going to see Xenagos This here? is a, It's got to be Xenagos. Incredible. Oh, the rope <laughs> dope from Reed Duke. What's he going to do for game three? Yeah, now we don't know. We were talking about this. We were kind of assuming, <laughs> oh, hey, this blue-red control shell is just too much better than yeah. this game plan. But Reed with the <laughs> gotcha here, and he gets the slam for 30. Oh, man. Reed Duke. So, by the way, all Nathan's doing is trying to get an idea for the sideboard plan right. here from Reed. But this was clearly a surprise as we're going to see a game Jeez. five. Reed Duke has equalized at two games apiece. And I'll tell you, if you snapshotted this game on turn three, I'm like, this is done. Right. And it wasn't. I, Nathan was just... Basically, another land short, I want to say. Huge kind stumble for what Nathan on that turn. There. And remember, that, that big scry with the temple. He kept the recovery on top and wasn't able to play another land for the rest of the game. So this oh, is this is an interesting little uh, paper wrinkle, we'll call it, right? Yeah. 
when you sideboard when you're playing on Arena or Magic Online, they, they can't see what you're doing. Take things right? in, take things out. Right. So what they do, and you'll see both players doing this. This is why you do this: is they take their entire sideboard, whatever is left, and they just shuffle it into their deck yep. and then remove 15 cards, because otherwise Nathan could look over and go, well, "What are you doing? Did you change right. anything, Reed? You know, do you still have the <laughs> true combo in, or are you going for the more control route?" Look what's on the top right there, Fading Hope. I wonder it's one of those things where you go, okay, do I keep Fading Hope or not? If you have the combo, I definitely want Fading Hope. If you're on Hole Breaker Horrors, Fading Hope kind of stinks, right? Because they can, you, you, you know, well, actually, Fading Hope's still okay, but man, I'm just curious kind of what the thought process is there. If Reed wins, I mean, Cedric has to ask, because wow, I, I did not see that coming. I just thought there were too many disruptive elements from Nathan's side after sideboard to consider bringing that in. The rope -a dope from Reed Duke. Incredible. And now, what problems does Nathan face with the idea that Reed could once again have the true combo in or go for the more controlling route? Yeah, and, and this, this, is, this is tough if you're on Nathan's side, right? Really tough? Like... Are you just have you have to guess? I mean, I'm assuming it's only a few cards different yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think it's just. But, look, I'm just gonna keep in some fading hopes. Yeah, right. It's still not too bad against Hellbreaker Horror. I'll just keep them in. Sure. And and um, but now you just have to be more mindful of keeping mana up. That's the thing, right? right? It, it's not necessarily the sideboard decisions as much as it is how the gameplay works. Yeah. You know because I. If Nathan still has to respect the possibility of, of dying to the combo rather than using it as a cheaper way to get a Holebreaker Horror out, he cannot just start tapping out and just assuming right. he's going to live. And Reed gets to kind of lord that over him. Yeah. Silly me for going, I bet Reed, why did Reed attack with the one ones, right? He's going to get a couple of horrors. Like, Wait a second. Boy, just <laughs> Little second. did we know, Reed. 30 was coming Reed. across. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, game theory-wise, it would be, you know, best for Reed to now pull the combo out, right? Because yeah. now you, you get the benefit of Nathan having to play around it, but you can just sit there and craft the perfect control hand. But there's always the leveling. It never stops, right? And uh, he may have kept it in. <laughs> combo or control? What do you think, chat? Game five. Combo or, contro uh, or control? What, what what's your, what's go your vote? I vote control. I think control. Yeah. What, what You're on the draw. Like? Yeah. You're on the draw. <laughs> you, you, you already, you know, just traumatized him, right? <laughs> and, uh, and now you can take advantage of the fact that he has to at least consider yeah. that you might just go off. Right. You know, because like in the first two games, for example, right, we saw Nathan be content to sit there and keep up interaction, right? Yeah. He's like, look, I'm not going to lose. I'm just going to, you know, make sure that I have it. But post-board, he was more aggressive about getting his combo in. Big, big game. Reed turning it around now. Everything's even again. Nathan with that hot start, but I, Reed. I can't believe Reed pulled out that game, especially with the start Nathan had. Because yeah. that turn where he just said, okay, go, that was brutal for Stoyer. Really big uh, slip up there. And then Reed was able to counter the next two plays. I mean, Nathan did what he's supposed to do there, just cast, cast. Right. But, you know, you do get punished very badly for skipping a turn yeah. in this format. And... Um, yeah, he just didn't hit his land drop for the next two turns after that, and that let those counters actually do things. And this is a pattern that you might see just moving forward, given that there are other, there is another Lotus Field combo deck, there is another creativity deck in the field. Just when you play this matchup, just be aggressive with your counters on those cheap spells, right? Mm. Hidden Strings is normally the type of card you're like, all right, go ahead, just cast what you need. But Reed, making sure those cards don't resolve, because Nathan always had something bigger up his sleeve. And Nathan was like, I don't want to deal with what you're going to do when you untap and have that mana. I'm just countering your things. Right. Wow. What a match to kick off our top eight Sunday. We're so glad you're here with us watching Pioneer. Game five. Got a game five decider. Straight away. That was on a mole. <sighs> Redo. Yeah, we got a win on a mold of six. Nathan with the win on a mold of five. Yeah, these combo decks can kind of shrug off a mulligan, I suppose. 
A little hope for some seven card hands here though for... All right. I spoke too soon. Nathan Stoyer immediately That's mulliganing. Quick mulligan. Yeah, now Reed hasn't decided yet, I don't believe. I think he's keeping. You like that hand? I see lands and spells again. Okay. Yeah. I see a river glide pathway, a, couple, like. a, a mountain, so can Zan. Disdainful stroke. That's a keep. I like it too. Looks like chat was split, but kind of thought control as well. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense if you're on the draw. Although, I, I guess Reed was on the draw in game four too, right? <laughs> yeah. Because he won game three. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't actually know. I'm not going to pretend that I do. <laughs> I, I will just lean. I, I will assume that whatever Reed chooses to do is the correct thing, and we will all find out. Paul Chion keeping it real today. Yeah, there's, there's no, I'm not, there is no analysis here. So Duke has kept, you can take a look at his hand on the left-hand side of the screen. Let's get a six, though, for Nathan. Come on now. So I mean, I guess it would be more game. dramatic if he went to five and okay. then won again, but... Odawara. Six would be, ooh. No Lotus Field. And a Mastermind's acquisition the, in a your Balagad recover. Starter. Oh, that is rough. That I mean, you don't have... You have to go to He's five. He's going to five. You have to go to five. Okay, so this is either dramatic win or a not like this. Oh. You know, it's, it's one or the other here for Stoyer. Yeah. He did mention when they were talking about the list, you know, Reed had said that he was going to play Lotus Field all the way up until the last minute on deck submission, decided to go with his creativity deck. But Nathan said, he did say, it does have its problems. Yeah. You know, this isn't the perfect deck. He said he thought it was good. Anytime you have a deck where you're trying to play ex extremely expensive cards and ways to set up into them, you're going to have a lot of inconsistent hands, right? You're going to have hands with lands and big spells. And whereas when you're looking at Reed's combo deck, it's much more streamlined, right? It might not be as explosive, but you're playing removal spells, cheap counters, you're playing big score, which is just a good card that you can play in any deck mm -hmm. into what you're trying to do. Whereas Nathan, it's way, way different. You're trying to find Lotus Fields and you're trying to play seven drops, right? Exactly, less forgiving. This is huge for Nathan. Look, we saw him win on a mulligan to five, but it if you to go to good. four, you know, oh, no. that's yeah. kind of last stop, right? I, your, your, your win percentage on five is already not great, and on four it plummets. Yeah, I mean, if you just have a couple lands, I think you just have to hope for the best and, and just keep. I saw Sylvan scrying with some lands, so I think you just keep this. I mean, yeah. there you go. What more do you want? I, I, He's I got the S. I, 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 think Nathan, I think this is just a keep, and Nathan just thinking about what he wants to send back. Because, look, you have Thespian Stage, Sylvan scrying. You have... If this was a seven, it would be right? perfect. It would be fantastic. You would just need the big spells. At five, it's it's five. You right where you want to be, let's say. Right it, at five, you it's it's you want to keep two lands, Sylvan scrying, Thespian stage. Yeah. Yep. And, and then and then you can pick Vizier or Strings. Right. Okay, we have a keep from Nathan Store. He's on five cards. He is keeping on the play. Okay. And here we go. Game number five underway. Is it going to be Reed Duke? Is it going to be Nathan Stoyer? The loser of this game, their tournament is over. The winner will advance. Land go from both players to kick things off here. Yeah, we could have considered playing that untapped to bluff Spell Pierce, but Nathan on a mold of five, you, you, they're just going to go for they're it. They're going for right. it. <laughs> And there's Sylvan Scrine for Lotus Field, the namesake. Came out a few years ago there in M20. Very powerful card if you can take advantage of it. All right, I mean. Hey, this is Ether Gust in hand now, too. Yeah, so we got some disruption here from Reed, but I mean, Nathan's got Lotus Field Despian stage, he right? Does. So he's got a bunch of mana. He's gonna have access to six mana with two Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Can't ask for more than that. No, this is about as good as you're gonna get on a five. We saw him win on a mold of five oh. earlier. Is that, Ramoka. is that good? It gets gusted. Right. It gets gusted. Now Nathan can of course recast it. So this is a longer term at, at some point. game plan. I mean, he didn't yeah. have the field yet, but. We're just kind of thinking a couple of turns ahead. Right, right. Because this is the Lotus Field turn. We'll not have the mana to do it this turn. Then you have the Thespian stage. So it's still going to be a few turns down the line. But mm -hmm. it is an uncounterable spell. 
And Reed can't really punish him, right, in the meantime. Like, take a look at his hand. It's very yeah, reactive. This is just, he's got all the controlling elements here. But again, keeping that Ether Gust, boarding an Ether Gust in this matchup. That could, that very, could very prove good. critical, absolutely. So we see Lotus Field with a couple of mana floating. I don't think he's going to cycle just yet. I think if you were maybe in danger of missing a mana drop, right. you would do it. This is a big impulse now for Duke. He does need to assemble a game plan. There's a big oh, score. Well, wow, and a Fable. Okay, that, so that, he found kind of wants. all the options yeah, here. Yeah. Turn three Fable, um, unlikely for Nathan to be able to go off next turn. That's what I was going to ask right. you. Is, is there a big scare for Reed to give him the green light this particular I mean, turn. especially on a mold of five, it just feels unlikely right. that Nathan will have everything he needs. Right. Right, because sure, I mean, he's got the two Vizier of Tumbling Sand, so you can tap the mana, uh, cycle, untap the Lotus Field, again, use yeah. the Thespian Stage, then you hit in strings, and right. then cast everything, but you're on five. Right. It's, like how, how, it's so unlikely that for you to have all of those things. Oh, but, oh, but Reed is going to, yeah, he's oh, going to be... Oh, did not patient. take the Fable. He took a make disappear. And he has double Sokinzan? Yeah. Okay. It's like, don't need fables. I'm just going to, you know, if you, if you just do nothing, I'm just going to just start making some shark tokens and put pressure on you that way. Okay, there's Thespian Stage on the battlefield here for Stoyer. Can he find a way through on a mulligan to five? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nathan knows, knows that there's no way for Reed to interact with that cycling, so he's cruising right Down through. To three green. Down to two green and a blue. Cycle. Zero on top of Lotus Field. So he's just going, to be going for Dramoka this turn. Right. And Reed, and ha Reed has okay. the Ether Gust light. here. All right, there's Dragon Lord Dramoka. He's like, going okay. On the stack. You can you can gust it either way, right? Well, you can't cast spells during your opponent's turn. Oh, right, right. So you, you want to do it, do it, you want to do it now, of course. Yeah. Ether gust oh, does not counter. Yep. Do you want to put it on top or bottom? Look at that face from Nathan Stoyer. Yeah. He's like, this is tough because he does need to come up with both green and white yeah. mana. He's going to put it back on top, though. Now, he did. Nathan, sure, that felt like a blowout, but mm -hmm. he, remember the Vizier site did cycle. It's not like he lost a million cards on right. that change, but it did slow him down significantly. It did feel like a blowout, yeah. All right, that yeah, it did. it did. <laughs> that was really you know, tough. I'm just, yeah. No, you're right, though. You're right. That, that was not like him putting all his eggs in one basket and then just basically losing the game. That's not the case, but it was a huge slowdown. Did he keep on top? He did. He did keep on top. So his yeah. plan next turn is Despian Stage Lotus Field, then play Dramoka and hope that that's good enough. The next turn. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose Reed, with his current hand, doesn't have an answer, right? No. Yeah. I mean, he has precious few. Right? Yeah. That was one of his only ways to interact. So the question is, can Reed capitalize? He's going to play a land here and then just say go. Nathan just going to pass. Just have a couple of Lotus Fields in play. Yeah, does he have a land drop here? No. Doesn't have a land drop. No. Okay. Yeah. And are we going to see... So Kenzen... No, Shark, Shark Tiger Weather. He's only had the three mana. Nathan Storer has to start getting a little nervous as a couple yeah. of tokens hit the battlefield. Right. If, but if we, we know that Reed doesn't have any combo potential in his hand, at least right now. Yeah, I mean, if we can find creativity, Ooh, big that score. would be great. Big score is nice. One. Does allow Thank Reed you. to dig deeper. Help find creativity plus combo piece. Or perhaps just Hullbreaker Horror and then bounce the Dragon Lord Jamoka. I think that's the game plan, right? Like if. If those two cards face off against each other, you like the whole breaker horror side of it yeah, quite a bit absolutely. better. Yeah, absolutely. All right, end step. Thespian Stage copies Lotus Field. Reed just passed the turn back once again. All right, I think it's just dragon time. It is. And this time right, it's going to no, resolve. No answer. Now, Reed can still cycle big score in response. or play big score in response. Does he have multiple ether gusts? Good question. There's one. There's okay. one in the so, sideboard. No. <laughs> 
But if he can find himself a hole breaker horror and send it back again. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Creativity or horror. Okay, that's a creativity. He found creativity off of big score. And Stoyer is tapped out. Yeah. Now, does he have the combo? <laughs> Let's see. Right? I, does he have the combo? We guessed no. Right. We have not seen but any evidence does, to the contrary. But if he does, it's over, right? Get in for 30? Well, and goes up to 24. With one short? Five, no, no, it has seven, a shark as well. Oh, and then the shark. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about the shark. So that's 31. Nathan would go up to 24. And then seven, seven toughness. So 23 damage, 23, 24 damage. All right, let's see what okay. Reed Duke has here. He's go. gonna go for the creativity. Guessed. Creativity for two. All right, creativity for two, targeted okay. to two pressures. What do we let's got? see what he hits. It's not gonna be bad either way. This is a huge sweat for us at home <laughs> as well as Nathan Stoyer. All right. Keep on going. Combo. Is it a green card or a blue card? Combo. It's going to be a whole brick. Oh, oh it's Zeta goes. He actually has the combo it's in the combo. Still. All right, I don't think this is lethal. Hold on. 31 damage coming in. Seven of it gets blocked. That's 23. Oh, 20, 30, 20, 24. Uh huh. 24. And then five still life still is gained. Power. Wait, that's exactly lethal, right? And look at this, both of the creatures damage. are hitting the red oh zone, and Reed Duke Combo! has completed the comeback. He was down 0-2 to start the day and just rattled off three wins in a row, including two combo finishes in the last games to knock Nathan Stoyer, the reigning world champion, out of the tournament. Oh. Wow, these guys really put on a show for us. He's read just enough there against Dragon Lord Jermoka, keeping the combo in for exactly enough damage there. And Nathan putting up a hell of a fight, nearly coming back on another Moldify. Incredible. Nathan was right in there. I mean, he had Dragon Lord Jermoka on the battlefield. He was all set to go on a Moldify, and it just wasn't enough the reverse sweep from reed duke i mean o2 against the current world champion right at the top of his game i mean back against the wall i mean what are your chances to to come back from and win there five percent ten percent super it's so super low. low once you're down the two games and right you know those were really disheartening games for duke right like he just kind of got blown out in game number one and then game number two it started to feel like does nathan just kind of have it every yeah. time right you know you kind of get that mental space going where you're just i did everything what, what's going on here and then he just kept fighting and scrapping and in many ways that's uh reed duke in a nutshell right yeah. like he is a freight train when it comes to magic he just keeps going and going and going and uh he ended up finding the win here yeah and what's really interesting is just kind of reed making that pivot after sideboarding and ultimately realizing look i, I actually think that i prefer the combo to the controlling strategy i'm still going to have all the counter spells but i want to just kill you in one go instead of kind of extending out that game so you know he had a plan coming in he's got a great team that spent tons of hours after he locked in that top eight to figure out what needs to be done in the matchup and he goes well i think everybody wants me to do the control thing but i'm going to combo you out that's right and he made a nice sweat there too because yeah. that's maximum drama right down 0-2, yeah. yeah. and then all the way back up again. So Reed, though, he's kind of an inter in an interesting spot because he's, like, that was exciting. I, I'm sure his heart was just pounding there, and he has to kind of calm himself back down to get ready for the semi. Yeah, and uh, putting himself, again, in better position, Reed, with, with all the accolades that he has, right, Hall of Fame, multiple top finishes, has never won a Pro Tour, but... Uh, and with, uh, with going back 0-2, it didn't look like he was gonna he was gonna get there again. But now, putting himself in fantastic shape, get some time to cool down, decompress, and then uh, think about the next matchup. That's right. Reed Duke picks up the victory there. Super super close match. I wonder how he's gonna get over the. You know, you get that adrenaline going, right? And then after it subsides it can kind of knock you down, right? Yeah. You know, you need to kind of, it's its really useful to try to stay on an even keel for these things, but I don't know how he could have in that one. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will note just how 
cool, calm, and collected he seemed. He Even appeared. after down Owen, being down 0-2, you saw that nice conversation that he had with Nathan Stoyer, right? He's just like, and, and he was still just Reed Duke. No, I don't buy that. Super friend. No way. I'm, he was inside. on. I, I know but inside. Out, but he outwardly. was like, this <laughs> can't happen. This is my day. <laughs> Not again. Why is this happening to me? I can't yeah. believe yeah. it. Yeah. But, but outside, he's having a nice calm he's still chat got that with presence. the world champ. Yeah. Incredible stuff there uh, from Reed Duke. Able to pick up the victory, and he is with Cedric right now. Catch coming all the way back. Reed, you were down 0-2 to the world champion. World champion Nathan Most of five game two wins that game. How are you feeling in that moment? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much the, the maximally discouraging start to the match. Like, first of all, losing both games, but also both games, I felt I, like, had pretty good positions at points, and, you know, things slipped away from me. So I, it, it, it was tough, you know, back against the wall, but um, I knew that I had some good weapons after sideboarding, and I was pretty comfortable with, you know, what I needed to do to win. So I just tried my best to, you know, keep, keep it together and, and execute. Well, your best was certainly good enough coming all the way back from down 0-2 to win the match three games to two. Let's talk about the sideboard decisions. Mm -hmm. After game number two for game three, you sideboarded out Xenagos, you sideboarded out World Spine Worm. We're going to the whole Breaker Horror plan. But then as we saw for games four and games five, the combo came back in. A little rope-a-dope, as it were. What's the thought process there? I think creativity versus Lotus Field is a really intricate matchup where it matters more how the cards are played and less what the cards are, which is kind of a long way of saying I just didn't want Nathan to know what I was doing sure. and, you know, make, make it uh, tough on him and keep him guessing. Okay. So next up, you're going to be playing, playing against, excuse me, Derek Davis, who might be keeping you guessing with this crazy five-color enigmatic fire sec 80 cards you're in, has all these different lines that they can take and all these crazy, you know, enchantments and creatures and everything. What's the expectation for the matchup? How do you feel going in? I think it's going to be tough and tricky. Uh, I That's a matchup I have a lot less experience with. And as you said, like 80 cards, tons of one-ofs and stuff like that, so that things can kind of go a lot of different ways. Uh, I do know that Nasif had a match against him yesterday, so I'll maybe try to get some some pointers before we, we fire it up. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm just here trying to play my game. Well, you're doing your game just fine. Paper play is back, and that means Reed Duke is back. Wins his match over Nathan Stoyer, three games to two. Reed, congrats to you. Marshall, heading your way. All right, great stuff there from Reed Duke. We're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back, we're going to have Shota Yasuoka versus Derek Davis. Yes, enigmatic fires Derek Davis. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more right after this.